this is Laura. Today what I'm going to share with you is a much requested recipe that I get and that is how to make gorditas. And gorditas, what they are is like a corn tortilla that's just thicker. We tend to fill them with different things like chicken or beef or cheese or beans or just different things. And there's many, many ways to make them. I am going to show you one of the versions that I like to make that I enjoy. They're not that complicated. I am going to make the gorditas today with some shredded chicken, some potato, and some red chile colorado. That's my version of one of the ones that I make. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Laura. I surely would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a video. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment, that really helps me out on the channel. I will leave the recipe for the gorditas down in the description bar along with any items that I use and any other information that may be helpful to you. So take a look there guys. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, we are gonna get started with the dough first because I like to let the dough sit at least an hour, okay? You could use it right away, but I like to hydrate it. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more water, so I like to let it sit and make sure that it's nice and hydrated. Here I have my corn flour here. It doesn't matter what brand you use, I just use the store brand. And I add my corn flour, and I'm going to add some baking powder. And like I said, guys, there's many, many ways to make these. Nobody's is wrong and nobody's is right. It's you make them how you like them. And then I'm gonna add my salt. I use kosher salt. We're gonna give this a little mix. Okay, now to this I'm gonna add my oil. You can add shortening and you can work it in there. You can add butter, you can add pork lard, whatever you prefer. I like to use just plain olive oil. That's all I like to use. But like I said, you can use any type of oil or shortening because you don't need too much. And then we're going to work it in there. Now the water that I'm going to use is warm. It's more on the hot side than the warm side. But you can use cold water. I prefer the warm. To me, it tends to hydrate the dough better, the flour. And we're going to add a little bit at a time. Remember, you can always add, but you can't take out. See, and you want this really, really soft. I'm gonna switch hands here. See how it just drinks up that water and firms up because it's hydrating. You almost want it a little bit on the wet side. I'll show you here close up in a minute when I'm done with this. Okay, I'm gonna bring you in for a close up and show you just like that. I mean, it's kind of hard for you to tell, but it's not going to stick to your hand anymore, okay? But you don't want it firm. You want this soft. So we're going to let it sit for about an hour. If it firms up on me, I will add a little bit more water. Right now it feels good, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, I've covered this with some, pla with some plastic wrap, and we're going to let it sit for an hour, and I will be back. We're going to get started with our filling ingredients. First item that we're going to use for a filling are some potatoes and real simple we're just going to boil the potatoes until they're tender we're going to peel them and then we're going to mash them so we're going to get this started okay now for our salsa that we're going to add to our chicken and potato mixture here I have some chile guajillo which looks like this and I will have it listed below guys so don't worry it looks like this just like this and all I do is take off the stem and remove the seeds and I cut them into small pieces just like this. Okay, the second chile that I'm going to use is chile de arbol and it looks like this. Okay, I will have this listed as well. So I added about, I don't know, about five or six of them and then if you like it hotter, well you can add more. That's totally up to you. To this we are going to add just a little piece of onion and one garlic. Okay, we are going to add some salt. I will leave the recipe listed below. Don't worry about writing it down. And then we're going to add a little bit of water just to cover. We don't want too much water. Because when we make our sauce, we want it 
thick so that our filling does not end up getting too watery okay so as you can see just like that just to barely cover okay and we're going to bring this up to the boil let the chiles rehydrate for about three to five minutes and that's all you need turn it off and then we will blend it okay the chiles have come to the boil I'm going to turn them off and I'm just going to let them sit there for a few minutes until this cools off and this helps the chiles, the dry chiles rehydrate and then we will puree it. Okay now in a separate pot I have some chicken parts. What I did is I added four chicken thighs. I wouldn't use chicken breast for this. We're going to add a little bit of salt and that's it. We're going to boil our chicken until it's completely cooked so that we can shred it. Okay, our chicken has been cooking for about 40 minutes or so, and it's ready. I'm going to let it sit and cool, um, drain it from this broth. Now, don't throw away the broth. You can use that to make yourself some delicious some Mexican rice. Okay, I'll be back. All right, we are going to start blending our, our chiles. I have them here in a little bowl. As you can see, it's not very much, and I probably won't even use most of that. But what I'll do is I'll save it for another use. So I just put everything in my little chopper here. You can do it in the blender if you want, but this, since it's such a small portion, I thought I would just put it in here. We're going to add a little bit of salt. And then we're going to puree this till it's very, very fine. I puree this very, very fine. Just don't get this on your clothes because it will stain your clothes. I'm just going to pour it back into this little bowl. Okay, now we're going to prepare our potatoes. All I did was peel the potatoes. I just cut them into smaller pieces just to make it easier to smash them. I just smash them with the fork or whatever you want to use. So we have our potato, our hot sauce. We have our chicken here that we need to shred up into smaller pieces. And I just cut it with a knife. You can shred it with your hands if you like. This is just faster for me. Alrighty guys, we are back at the stove. We are going to get our chicken filling with potato ready. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. Oil of your choice does not matter. We're going to wait for this to get hot and we are going to saute our onions. Okay, now that our skillet is hot, we're going to add in our onions. This will not take long because the onions are diced pretty small. We're going to add just a little bit of salt. Now we're going to add in our garlic. That's going pretty fast. Now we're going to put in a little bit of our hot sauce. We might add a little bit more, but I'm going to start with just this. Okay, now we're going to throw in our chicken. And we're going to add in our potato. Okay, then we're just going to work in our potato. Just smash it all in there together. Now we're going to add in our salt. I hadn't added any salt because I don't want to over salt this. And of course use salt to your liking. Taste it. Adjust it. You can always add but you can't take out. Okay, so I'm going to taste this. Turn off the heat and then just keep mixing this until it's very well incorporated. If you want more heat at this point, go ahead and add more of the chile. I think for my liking, this is just enough. Chicken has lots of flavor. And you can make the filling the day before. If you want to make yourself your time more efficient, you can make this the day before. Just have it ready. Just make your dough the morning of and you're good to go. All right, everybody, here we have our filling. We are going to now add our cheese. I use quesadilla cheese. Really, you can use whatever cheese you want, whatever your family likes the most. That's what I would use. You can use Jack, Monterey, uh, Cheddar, whatever you like. Okay, just like that. All right, we are going to start pressing our dough. 
have a tortilla press here. You don't need this. You can actually do these by hand, but I just find this easier, makes them more uniform. And all I did was cut a Ziploc bag and I slid open the sides and cut off the top. That's all you need. The measurement that I have found that works for me, like I said, you make them your own, make them whatever size you want. Normally two scoops on this large cookie scoop is, is enough for me. It's perfect for the size that I need. So it's about like that. I would say it's about two ounces of dough. Okay, we're gonna move that to the side. Just roll it up into a little ball. And you see how it doesn't stick to my hands, but yet I can press it gently and it still presses nice. Okay, so we're gonna put it in the middle here. And we're just gonna give it one good press, not really hard. You see the size that I made right there? Just like the size of a typical corn tortilla, okay? And now before we take it off the plastic, I'm gonna put the filling in. And what I'm gonna do, this is gonna look like a taco, but it's not. We're gonna reshape it. We're gonna close the edges, just like that with the plastic. Okay, and then we take it off like that. Just make sure that it's sealed so nothing gets out. Okay, and now I smash it in half. I put it down here and then I start shaping it round like that. Let me move this to the side to show you a little bit better. This is easier to show you. Or you can even do it in your hands like this. Just shape it into a, a circle here. And you see how everything stays inside? That's the fastest and easiest way I have found to make them the way I like them. Everybody makes them different, so you can find your own technique once you get to making them. And that's it. And this is about how thick you want them. That's about a half an inch thick. And then I just put them here on a little cookie tray. Let's go ahead and make another one. show you another way that you can do it. You just put it on your hand, put the filling in the middle, and you can just close it up like this. And then just turn it around and press it down. Just like that. So either way, whatever you prefer. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get these fried up. I'm gonna pop y'all back to the stove. Alrighty guys, we're back at the stove. I have my cast iron skillet here. I have my gorditas sitting ready to go in. I have the heat at a medium heat. You want it hot, but you don't want it piping hot. You want it just when you drop them down, they start to bubble, just like that. You don't want to cook them too fast because you want them to cook all the way through. And if you cook them too fast, only the outside will get crispy, but the inside will still be doughy and we don't want that. Okay, so we're going to let them sit there for about three minutes on each side, just on a medium heat, and we're going to get them, let them get nice and crispy. I'm going to bring you in close because we're going to flip these and I want to show you what they look like before we need to flip them. Just like that. See how nice and golden they are? And always help yourself. Don't let them just drop because it's they're quite heavy so you'll splash yourself and burn yourself how nice and golden they are. Okay, we're gonna leave these be for another four to five minutes. Alrighty, 
now that they have fried up real nice and brown that I know that they are crispy on both sides it's been at least 10 minutes that's how much I let them cook so I hope you can see the color of this gordita here I'm just gonna put it on a cooling rack over here and let them drip We're going to let these get a little bit more. Yeah, see they're crisping up real nice and golden brown. See? Beautiful. Okay, everybody, here they are. Look at that, how scrumptious that looks. And then here, I just have some tomato, some diced tomatoes, some diced onions, some lettuce, some more cheese, and of course, you cannot forget the salsita picante, and some sprinkling of cilantro if you like. Now, I'm gonna get one of these, and all you do, just a typical gordita. Now, You'll hear how these are a lot more crunchy because of that cornstarch. Ooh, they're still hot. I want to show you up close. I hope the camera picks it up. Look at that. All the chicken and the cheese. But yet all the corn is cooked. All the masa is cooked. So what we do is we take a little bit of, of lettuce. I mean, you add whatever you want to in it. Some lettuce, some tomato, a little bit of onion, some more sprinkling of cheese, and then of course, you cannot forget the salsita. Mmm, look at that. Okay, I'm going to pick it up on a separate plate here, and then look at that. Yummy. Okay guys, let's give this a taste. Alrighty guys, we're gonna give this gordita a taste. It looks delicious. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Alright, this is just too good. I cannot even start to describe how tasty they are. Now the cornstarch makes it a little bit crispy. If you make it without the cornstarch, they're just a little bit soft. I personally like the crispiness in the gorditas. It just puts them just way over the top. And then you dress them up however you like. These are just delicious. I hope you give them a try. They are so, so good. I mean, who's not going to like that chicken, cheese? Uh, it's just delicious. Wrapped up in this crispy corn gordita. Who's not going to like that, guys? I love it. Okay, guys, that's going to conclude the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it for you. And go give it a try. Come back and let us know how you liked it. I will leave all the information down below in the description box and everything that I use. Just go take a look there. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.